Hi guys, during this series of three videos, we are going to look at three tips to impress your boss. These tips are coming from my own experience. Own experience. The goal of behind these tips is to help you to have interactivity inside your graph, user friendliness, and clear and neat graph. Which means that what I, what I mean by interactivity is, for instance, going sliding on any type of data and have all the information without having to click or without having to look at the database. Bringing user friendliness, which means like bringing more possibilities than just a simple chart on Python. And have clear and neat graph, which means graph which is going to look much more professional. That graph that I'm sending to client every day for three years now. and. That's what we are going to look at through this series of three videos. Okay, let's get started. You have the code below, or you can look at the link on Medium to have more information about the code, but we are going to go to the code through the code step by step. Okay, the first thing that we are going to do, we are going to start by importing our package. Let's set a title that we are going to call import package. Uh, okay, let's be careful of the spelling. Perfect. Okay, as explained in the code above this video, we will start by importing pandas and numpy. No, numpy is not necessary for our example, but it just reflects to always import pandas and numpy. After that, you will have to import the data and package. Essentially, we are going to use the data and package in order to define our start and end dates before to in order to import our market data you will need to use pandas data reader essentially pandas data reader going to be the api that we are going to call in order to get our market data or just in order to get data api to get data and we are going to use plotly for data visualization if you don't know how to if you get an issue when you're trying to import plotly or pandas data reader that means that you need to, to pip install it. You can just type pip install plotly or pandas data reader. If you need further information, you can just ask questions in the Q&A and I will send you some links. Okay, guys, um, let's import the packages. Okay, let's re-import. Okay, perfect. Now that we have imported our packages, we can start by defining the data period and import our market data. So in order to import market data, we need to define a start and end dates. And that's why we are going to start by, first of all, defining a date period, title, title, up, date, or data period. Because uh, in order to get market data, we are going to call an API and inside this API, we will need to define a start and end date. Let's do it now, start. And we are going to use date time in order to have the date in the right format. Okay, we are going to pick up between the first January 2020 and today. And now that we have defined our start and end date, for instance, if you execute end, you will have the day. Today it's the 13th of November and it's 7.32 and 42 seconds here in London. Okay, now we have defined the start and end date. Let's now import our data frame title import data frame oh, let's keep some rules import data frame okay let's execute now we have we are going to import our first data frame the code is detailed inside the video inside the articles Okay, in order to get the data 
from Pandas Data Reader. I'm not gonna go back on it. You can follow the um, video that I have posted with the other article if you want to know more about how to get market data. I'm going to go straight to the point here in this video. So in order to get market data, you have first of all to define the ticker. Here we are going to, to download market data for Tesla. The um, reference is gonna be Yahoo Finance, the start and end date, which are our, which <coughs> sorry, which are our variable which have been set up just right here. Okay, let's execute. And before to execute, let's print it. Okay. Okay, perfect. We have the data for Tesla between the 1st January 2020 and the 13th of the 13th of November. We have the high, low, open, and the closing price, the volume, and the price. What we need, you can either draw your graph using the opening price or the closing price, or even the, lo the lowest price of the day or the highest price of the day, or the volume. But right here inside the graph that we are going to, to draw. So let's make a quick view of what we are going to draw. Essentially, what we will draw, we are going to draw a graph where we will define Tesla share price and how that evolves over the time. And the goal of this, and I will go back on the first tips inside the video, but yeah, the goal is to draw this type of graph to make it interactive, to make it interactive and user friendly and good looking. Okay enough talking let's continue okay now we have imported our data frame what we'll do in a, we are, and we have imported plotly what we'll do we will need to define a figure in plotly essentially if you want to draw a graph in plotly you will need three steps but yeah the first step will consist of defining a figure and the last step will consist of showing the figure. Up, importing the figure and showing the figure. And in between, what we need to do, you will need to set up what type of traces you, will, you want to plot. In Plotly, each type of graph, you have to define your traces. For instance, here with this first line, declare figure, fig equal go the figure. Essentially what we have done right here, we have just say with the first line of code, we have just said, we have just coded like, okay, plotly, please draw me a figure, but we have nothing inside. And with this line of code, add trace, we are going to add a trace based on the data that we have defined. Okay, for the x-axis, we are going to use the index of the data frame. Here we have the index, and uh, that's what we are going to use for the x-axis. Let's remove the end of, let's remove the end of it. Okay, what we have done right here, we have set up, oh, let's close the parentheses. Yeah, what you have done right here, we have set up the x-axis. On the x-axis, we want the index. On the y-axis, we want the closing price. Let's execute. Okay, you have your first graph. Essentially, on the x-axis, you have the date. It's on the index. And on the y-axis, you have the closing price. For instance, if you want the closing price for the 18th of March, it was 72.244. And again, uh, I just want to spotlight and to highlight the interactivity that you can have with Plotly is like, just by going on the graph, you can have you can have all the information that you want about your graph. For instance, like if you, if you want the price on the 20th of July, you don't need to go on the data frame and look at the, and or, make a VLOOKUP and check out on the, um, the data for the 21st of, of September, for instance, you can just slide on the graph and you have all the, ins all the answer at your question. And now what we are going to do, 
we are going to add extra information for this graph. I'm just I'm just gonna add to I'm just going to add quickly the title. You can just copy and paste the code essentially just to make it looks better. Execute. Okay, now we have a title. We have information about the y-axis. And uh, what we are going to add right now, we are going to add a range slider. Essentially, in order to do so, I'm going to, to let's type x or let's type range slider. Okay. In order to do so, you're going to have to type fig dot update x axis and between the parentheses you're going to have to type up range sorry range slider visible equal true okay essentially what we have asked right now to plotly gonna be to add a run slider to our graph let's execute yes and now if you look at the graph you have a run slider and you can focus on any part of the graph what I can just propose you in order to make the graph a little bit more interesting, we can also plot data for another type of, of shares. We can, for instance, download the shares for Netflix. What we'll have to do right here, we'll have to download the market data for Netflix. Let's check out that Netflix is well printed. Okay, we have market data for Netflix for the same period. And if you want to add Netflix data on the graph, you're just gonna have to add an extra trace. And essentially, by adding the extra trace, you are just asking, like, you have the same parameter for the title and slider, you don't have to change anything. But the only difference is the fact that you're going to add information for Netflix. And as well, uh, that's other information that you can add. For instance, you can define the color, the width of the line. Uh, for instance, if you type, if you add this type of information just above for Tesla. Don't forget the comma. Yes, perfect. Instead of red, we're going to keep blue. We're going to increase the width because the uh, initial width is 1. And we are going to increase it to 1.1. And we're going to add a title to be able to differentiate Tesla and Netflix. Okay, let's... Oops. I was good. Up. Let's check out that we have not put too much argument. Okay, perfect. This looks to be good. Mm. Ah, okay, sorry. Oh, this must be here. Up. Let's close the parenthesis. And now, if you execute, perfect. Now we have, oh, sorry, I have to change the caption. And if you look at it, now you can even zoom, let's say you want to zoom on this period of data, you can just slide, zoom, and you can have a comparison of what happened for Netflix and Tesla. For instance, if you want to zoom during the month of the coronavirus, which was between the beginning of February and mid-April and how the shares are, have acted. As you can see, the shares are quite correlated. That's very surprising. I didn't expect it, but 
as you can see that's quite correlated okay but that was the first tips uh, concerning data visualization and i can tell you that if you show that to the clients your client gonna be excited because you can just like instead of just having a simple graph you're sending a graph with a run slider and in the next video we will look at an extra an extra argument which is gonna help us to add a dictionary i'm gonna go more in depth in the next video on how to add a dictionary to your graph and this dictionary is gonna be able to filter your data let's say if you want to look to the last month to the six last months to the year to date if you want to have the data for one year year to date six months one month you can just play with the data but that's going to be for the video number two of this series okay i hope you enjoyed this first video where we have seen how to make your graph much more interactive and much more clear and neat. You can use this type of tips for any type of data. Here is like market data, financial data, but you can use it for medical engineering, for marketing, for engineering. As soon as you have 10 series, or you can always use a range slider. Okay, I hope you enjoy this video. Feel free to add the likes and uh, that's going to be always a pleasure. You can follow me on Instagram. You're going to have the Instagram at the top of the um, articles. So on my, on my bio, you can follow me on Instagram or just enjoy the video. I really wish you enjoyed it because this tips is amazing. The two other tips are going to be even better, you're going to see. But this tips is already amazing. You can just have a run slider, focus on your data, move and make your data much more interactive so if you have been able to follow it and to plot it also let me know like just tell, tell me okay like i have been able to plot it i'm gonna be happy to read that feel free to contact me on linkedin as well i'm gonna i received maybe like 15 messages last time for my latest articles and that's always a pleasure to talk with people and i just realized that's one of my reader like we had like a common relation with um, with a friend and um, yeah that's always a pleasure to to talk with people okay guys i hope you enjoy these tips and that's all for this video see you